Back talking Cougar Hoops here on Mediacom Channel 22, the coaches show with athletic director at Columbia College and men's head basketball coach Bob Burchard. 2013 and 2014 schedule is upon us, a whole fresh slate as we've talked about with all new players coming uh, on the bench and uh, brand new players here at Columbia College. We mentioned earlier the uh, Cougar Madness event. I know one of the uh, the favorite uh, games of the night and a lot of buzz about it with the other student athletes and students in general was a little question and answer session between the new players and trying to get the, the you know trying to get them to answer some questions about teammates and their coaches and, and uh, it was put a couple new guys on the spot a little bit unfortunately the women's team got the best of you in that competition but tell us about uh, some of your new faces that you've gotten what they what they bring to this Cougar team well we we've um, got kind of a mixture of uh, transfer and uh, and freshmen um, two of the older guys who are actually going to be um, seniors for us this year as transfers. Uh, Gerardo Isla comes to us from a junior college in Kansas. He's um, uh, from Chile originally. Um, unfortunately, he's only going to have one year of eligibility because of his national team experience. And um, so we're trying to get him up to speed as, as, uh, as quickly as we can. He, he is really skilled. Um, he has a, a, some uh, skill sets that we like to use um, in terms of being able to play away from the basket. Um, and, and so I, I think he'll make an immediate impact. Um, Patrick Massey uh, is uh, coming to us from a, a junior college in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, our son lives down in Phoenix and, and does a lot of recruiting for us there. And he sent us Marquette Morrell, and, and then Patrick is the next in that, uh, that list. Big, uh, about 6'9", probably 230, 235, left-handed kid. And um, I think he'll be um, a big physical guy at the basket, which I think you need to, to play at the highest levels uh, in the NAI. Um, Jeremy Nolan is, um, is kind of a, a small forward for us, about 6'7", very skilled, a really strong shooter. Um, he uh, came to us from a junior college in Kansas as well. Uh, he did play one year at uh, Southwest Baptist, a Division II school, so I think he's got a real depth of uh, experience uh, there. Um, Travis Vogt is uh, one of our freshmen, and he uh, comes to us from Carl Junction, uh, Missouri. Um, he's a point off guard, you know, kind of a combo, I think, like we like to, to call him. And um, very confident young man, um, and I, I think he's going to play right away as a freshman, so I, I'm very excited about uh, what he's done so far in our in our workouts, um, Malik Ray is um, a former high school teammate. Uh, is a freshman, a former high school teammate of uh, Chantel Stancil. Uh, Malik um, is a, an extraordinary athlete, beautiful athlete, actually, and um, I think his uh, upside is is just really really large. Um, in high school, he was uh, a standout in the track, uh, high jump six ten. Uh, was kind of the favorite to, to lead uh, to, to win the state championship last year and and didn't get the jump he needed but um, that, that's pretty shocking right there to, to have that that level of uh, athleticism um, I think each one of these guys are, are guys that you're going to see participate and um, again um, uh, other than Travis are all in the, that forward spot and uh, so so we're going to need uh, immediate help in that position and uh, that's what, the, as you mentioned, the the challenge of ending one season and putting away the the trophies of the players of the past and their accolades and what they brought with them on and off the court with with the new guys and trying to get them into that that system that you and Coach Brock have have built here at, at Columbia College over the years. Talk about the uh, the off season as far as practice is concerned. First game is coming up on Friday, uh, and then there's you know, f scattered games. But then you know this year conference play is even earlier. Is does that change the way you guys? Uh, get anything rolled out as far as uh, getting these guys up to speed on, on the system and, and uh, trying to get them up to speed quicker? Well, I don't think it changes a whole lot, actually, Cosmo. Um, my, my goal always has been to get about 30 practices in before you start uh, competing. And um, yeah, I really treat it as a lesson plan, and the, the lesson plan doesn't change much. Maybe, maybe I've turned into that old professor, you know, who, who just pulls out the old lesson plans from uh, 20 years ago and just keeps them going. Um, we do we do tweak some some of what we're doing, but um, you really get that 30 practice mark for some reason is a is a real 
um, um, barrier you got to get through to have a body of work in to be able to participate. Um, and, and to be honest with you, that 30 could come in a whole bunch of different ways. It could come, you know, just in 30 separate days, or it could come if, if you double up in practices. Um, you know, I, I think right now we're not as far along and in, in deep into everything that we like to do because of the newness we've talked about. And so we haven't been able to just follow the same plan that, that we did last year. Um, so we, we'll be adding stuff uh, as we go. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, I, I've really tried to focus on, Cosmo, is, is really teaching guys to be good at the game. And um, you, certain things have to take place to, to get to a certain skill level of, and understanding. And um, it, sometimes it just takes a little bit longer than, than others to, to, to get to that spot. I've had two really good scrimmages. I uh, had a wonderful experience with State Fair Community College down at Fort Leonard Wood. Um, they invited us to come down and put on a hardwood classic game for the troops. Um, you know, we have a campus down on, on Fort Leonard Wood, and so it was, we had a, had a lot of our students there. And um, it, it was an amazing experience, to be honest with you, to, to be on, on the fort, to, to have the arena filled with, uh, with troops in their camouflage, and um, to be so appreciative of, of having that opportunity for recreation for them, a kind of a break in their training. Um, and I thought we played pretty well first time out, and then we went up to an annual scrimmage that we have with Moberly Junior College. Um, I always uh, like to take our team there. Moberly is always extremely well coached and, and have a national caliber uh, team and always have major athletes, um, you know, guys that are going on to Division I schools. And um, we played that as a game and came out pretty strong there. So um, I, I like our preparation. Um, I still think we have a, a ton of questions that need to be answered. Some of them we've already touched on. Uh, some of them are just structural. Um, you know, how do we change positionally? And, and uh, some of that has to do with our returning players, which is a, another challenge as well, Cosmo, and that, that we, I think, are going to be asking certain guys to positionally change their game um, and uh, just, just for the betterment of the team. Um, that's where that leadership will come in to see if guys can handle that well. And that transition, not just uh, with your own team, but with other teams, including two new teams this year, and then more teams coming into the AMC in the near future, next season, as a matter of fact. But Freed Hardman um, really changes the landscape primarily on the women's side. They come in as the, the preseason number one. They were in the Fab Four a year ago. Um, but on the men's side, they're right in the mix in mid-continent as well, new uh, to the conference. What do you know about the new programs? Well, I think uh, it, it's great to see our conference grow. And... Um, and I think it's going to grow um, in many ways in the, in the upcoming years. Uh, we're moving towards a full-time commissioner, full-time conference office, which will be really healthy. Uh, we've grown in geography, which uh, changes the landscape um, literally, but uh, travel plays a big role in, in playing. Um, uh, playing a game in Tennessee will be different, uh, just in terms of not only the environment, but uh, uh, the quality of the program at, at Freed Hardeman. Um, you know, the men's side has been a top 20 team as well. They were a little bit down last year, but it's an extremely well-coached um, program. Um, and, and just newness yeah. is another thing. You know, I think, you, you know, you kind of get into a groove with uh, the, the people that you play and, and having new teams uh, change, changes that. We've been exposed to Mid-Continent a little bit more because we played them over in the William Woods tournament a couple times, although they've got a new coach now and, and we've never tra traveled to Kentucky. Um, we're going to add Lindenwood Belleville, uh, who another team that we played over at William Woods. We know a little bit more about them, and then St. Louis College of the Pharmacy. So, um, and right now we've we've committed to playing everybody twice, mm -hmm. and, uh, and so next year um, our our conference schedule will be uh, like t 24 games right. in league out of 30, and uh, that changes things uh, as well. So. Um, I, I'm very happy with what's happened to the league. I think it's been extremely positive. Um, Freed will make an impact. They already have this year. Um, they beat our volleyball team yeah. in regular season play. I'm not sure when the last time that actually <laughs> occurred. And, and so, um, you know, new, new competition, um, it, I think, is healthy for all of us. Is there any discussion down the road, a little off topic, but within the, the expansion of the conference to split into conference divisions, east-west, north-south, anything along those lots lines? Of, lots of discussion, Cosmo, and, and we, we felt like we were moving towards that direction. 
the issues that we've had are mathematical in, in that we have uneven numbers. Um, uh, Stevens College being a single uh, right. gender uh, program uh, throws the balance off um, in, in that regard. And, um, and so on the men's side, um, you know, we, we would only have 13 schools. And uh, so you'd have a, a division of seven and a division of six and right. trying to get the math to work out. I think probably um, over time we'll see that occur. And uh, I know there's that way in, in soccer. I don't think it's uh, mid-continent doesn't have women's soccer at this point, but they are expected to add it, I think, here fairly soon. So that would not make it very fair, obviously, at, the, at that point. And the scheduling earlier, December 5th, is the first conference game. We kind of touched on that a little bit. Uh, that, uh, Like you said, that, that you're jumping right into those those real meaningful games as far as trying to, to position yourself at the top of that AMC conference and get it going with William Woods and then uh, – Oh, I don't know. There's a familiar face coming back to town with uh, Coach Dooley bringing the Baker Wildcats in. That'll be a fun night at Southwell. Well, I think we have some really early marquee games out there. Um, uh, we open up Friday, but then uh, we go to Central Methodist uh, in a week, and that's, that's always a, an amazing contest. Uh, it's, historically, it's been one of our better games. Um, and then uh, we bring Hope International in. Mm -hmm. And um, they're, they're making a swing through the state. They're from California. They were our second round opponent yeah. in the national tournament last year. Came down to a block charge <laughs> call at, at the end. And um, yeah. so I, uh, uh, that'll be an amazing national level game right off the bat. And uh, then we turn right around and, and uh, Coach Dooley's gonna come back and bring his Baker team to our Thanksgiving tournament. So um, I think there are a lot of really key early games to, 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 um, to put on the schedule. And then we do get into conference play uh, early on in the first semester. It's the first time we've ever done that. Um, I think it, it adds another twist to things because, to be honest with you, in a, in a whole conference schedule, uh, Cosmo, I, I really feel like uh, sometimes it's not always uh, uh, who you play, it's when you play them. And uh, so if you get people in different parts of their, uh, their evolution, you can, you can either be on the positive or, or negative side. And as far as the you know with, with scheduling of that like you mentioned yeah you sometimes you play you know you get william woods right out of the gate and at different times now before the break a lot of times there's different players that aren't eligible to play in that first semester is that the case with conference that'd be, I'd, I mean, It'd I be the same, same thing and, yeah and you know it has to do with the changeover in rosters which yeah. uh, can happen obviously with injuries uh, right. obviously with uh, just maybe a, a team starts to peak at a different time and if you catch them early um you know, I, my, my anticipation is, is the, the Cougars this year are going to be a lot different in February than they will be in November. And I think that's the goals of a lot of programs as you gel through your 30 practice march and then start getting into games and, and winding things down through the season. As you and Coach Brock uh, discuss goals with the team, what are, uh, what are top three goals that you've presented if you have or, uh, or if there's maybe just one? Yeah, our, there is just one, and it always has been for our program, Cosmo, and that is to get to our highest level. Um, I, I, I stopped the whole uh, writing and posting goals uh, <laughs> years ago. Um, I, I believe every group um, has a level that they can get to, and uh, there are some limitations at times to what level that team can get to. It might be just skill level of the guys. It, it might be the makeup of the team. Um, and it really... Uh, our, our goals always are we're going to try to get each one of our guys to their highest level. We're going to get the whole group to their highest level. That's, our, that's what our uh, goal, that's what our objective is, and, uh, and to live in the moment. And um, I, I really, uh, over my time, have, have uh, kind of um, thought that's a huge thing for um, people to do, but particularly college students to do, is um, to just live in the moment, to, to really enjoy their experience and um, see, see where, um, how, the, how they can transition. And um, so uh, I, I know that, that does sound like coach speak, but it, it is what we do. Um, and, and if we can get each of our guys to a really high level, if uh, our group can be at a high level, then all those wins and losses have a way of taking care of them. So. Well, fun challenge uh, as you mesh the new group, the six or seven new guys in with the returning guys. Uh, to build the chemistry that will uh, hopefully lead to another AMC run and then back to Kansas City for another shot at the national tournament. Coach, thanks for your time. And, uh, again, the full schedule, if you haven't found one yet, uh, ColumbiaCougars.com. You can see and meet all the players and get their rosters and, and the uh, stats and videos. And, again, the full schedule, first home game coming up here on Friday the 1st and uh, a couple more after that. So check it out. 
Again, ColumbiaCougars.com head coach Bob Bertrand. Thank you again. Thank you, Kyle. All right, thanks for watching Cougar Coaches Show here on Mediacom Channel 22.